From 1981 to 1994, a French film movement flared into life, baiting the critical establishment and enthralling audiences before burning out. This is Cinema de Luc. Just 10 films are typically identified as being part of the movement made by three directors, Jean-Jacques Benex, Leos Carax, and Luc Besson. Ça va pas. The genre was first defined by Raphael Basson in La Revue du Cinéma. He derided the films for being obsessed with visuals, coining the term cinéma de luc. Casting a skeptical eye at the political and critical establishments in France, these three young directors created films focusing on disenfranchised young people living at the edge of society, falling in love in complicated, toxic relationships, and liberally plundering pop cultural influences and visual styles. At the heart of Cinema de Luc is an obsessive focus on visual styling. These films have a stylistic playfulness that's more reminiscent of New Hollywood than New Wave. It's common to see strong colour washes, impressionistic splashes of light, or gimmicky devices like point-of-view shots. Genre influences also abound, like the thriller setting of Diva, the sci-fi styling of Mauvais San, or Besson's high-octane action films. Pop music and references to films and TV also recur, creating a collage-like feel that blends highbrow and lowbrow culture. Besson's Nikita is a great example of this self-consciously poppy styling. Nikita is a drug-addicted street punk who kills a cop during a pharmacy robbery. Sentenced to life in prison, her captors fake her death and enroll her in a training program for assassins. The film is shot with widescreen anamorphic lenses, peppered with chaotic gunfights, and cut together with rapid edits. With its punchy action and feather-light assassin narrative, it's no wonder that Besson quickly became a Hollywood name. But the film's plot is surprisingly subversive, showing the mental toll of Nikita's double life. Nikita bounces between manipulative, unsuitable men before meeting Marco, who she falls in love with. This element of romance is another key feature of Cinema de Luc. Whether thrown together by chance circumstance or playfully pursuing each other, the young characters of these films fall hopelessly in love, often with dire consequences. In Ben X's film 37 Degrees de la Matin, the love affair between Zorg and Betty takes center stage. Failed writer Zorg is working as a handyman in a resort when he meets Betty. While at first their relationship is rosy, Betty's mood swings and violent temper cause problem after problem, and the couple flee from place to place while trying to sell Zorg's novel. With its meandering plot and long runtime, the film features a wide range of characters and situations across mid-80s France, giving it an episodic feel. But the thread that holds the film together is the tempestuous relationship between Betty and Zorg. Betty is consistently portrayed as hyper-feminine, like a character in a perfume advert. Her deep, unsatisfied need for an ideal life, where Zorg is revered as the genius she sees him as and she is respected, is the cause of much of her fury. Meanwhile, Zorg's attitude towards Betty is also problematic. He conceals information from her and blames her mood swings on a monthly problem. Belle fille, hein? Entre nous. Enfin, un peu nerveuse. Ah, mais vous savez, elle est pas toujours comme ça, hein? c'est... Je sais pas comment vous dire, elle a, elle a des, des crises, ça revient chaque mois, c'est difficile pour nous les hommes de comprendre, c'est vrai. Needless to say, some aspects of the sexual politics of this story have aged poorly. The same can be said of much of Cinema de Luc, especially in the light of sexual assault allegations against Luc Besson. Betty's anger doesn't just stem from her relationship. At times, she seems to be rebelling against society itself. This sort of rebellion is another integral ingredient to Cinema de Luc. The protagonists of these films are often young people living at the edges of society, using drugs, working low-wage jobs or simply not working, living in pokey flats, cabins, or literally underground. Leos Carax's Les Amants de Pont Neuf is a great example, following Juliette Benoche and Denis Levant as homeless people who meet by chance on a parish street and sleep rough on the Pont Neuf bridge. They drink, take sedatives, steal a police boat, and break into apartments and art galleries. Their existence is all about transgression. 
Carax is perhaps the most abstract of the Cinema du Luc directors, and the film's rebellious nature stretches beyond its characters and into its style. Chaotic montages of shaky camera and a mishmash of pop music create uncomfortable, jarring images. The film was produced alongside the French Bicentennial celebrations in 1989, which feature heavily. As the Great Republic celebrates its long history, the tearaway protagonist sleeping rough on one of its oldest landmarks embrace chaos on the edge of society. Cinema du Luc disappeared as quickly as it arrived, as each of the three directors departed on their own career path. Ben X abandoned Artifice in favour of documentary, Besson moved to Hollywood, and Carax charted a more extreme course with his divisive Polar X. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, mon frère. But despite its short duration, the influence of Cinema du Luc can be felt throughout French cinema, particularly in the stylish work of filmmakers like Jean-Pierre Junet and Christophe Gans, and its focus on rebellion paved the way for a new generation of transgressive filmmakers like Gaspar Noé and Xavier Gens. For a movement supposedly sustained purely by style, that's quite an achievement.